This is Dr. Angus Pike here, founder and creator of What Actually Works, where we help people just like you to get well and more importantly, to stay well. And today I wanna to talk with you about the three pillars of exercise. And if you're missing one of these pillars, then really you're missing out on, on, on one of the, the basics and the fundamentals of, that will help you get well and stay well. And so often, uh, we tend to focus on just one of these pillars, the one that we like, or perhaps we don't even know of the other two from there too. So let's work our way through these three pillars and give you some examples of some things that you can start to do literally today to start to get those genetic requirements for these kind of movements. And so the first of those pillars is that we need to move often at a slow pace. And the great thing about this is that you might have heard of this is really just incidental exercise. And so we can get this incidental exercise really by just, you know, instead of parking right at work, you know, park a couple of blocks away. You know, if you're taking the bus or tram or train, then instead of going and walking straight to the closest train station, walk to the next one. Do the same thing on the way home from there as well. You know, it's about taking the stairs instead of the elevators or the escalators. And so this little bit of incidental exercise can really add up from there too. It can be things like, you know, walking the dog. It's uh, next time that you take your kids to the park instead of sort of sitting there reading the newspaper then hop up and and play with them from there as well and so this low level incidental exercise needs to make up the vast majority of what we're doing in our weeks and so you know at this kind of level there too our heart rate is only slightly raised from there too you know we don't need to be kind of you know raising a sweat or anything like that as well and so you know if this is something that you're doing at the gym or or not then it's a very slow walk on the treadmill it's a, a bike ride or maybe really easy swim um, it's throwing a frizz or something like that as well so the first thing we need to be doing is lots of slow the second thing we need to do is we need to sprint occasionally and so that's those all-out efforts and so when I talk about sprinting I don't mean just running now this uh, need for us to sprint really came from days of old when we had to run away from the lion or a tiger and these all-out efforts of energy these sprints here have been shown to have the most beautiful impact on producing healthy chemicals inside us chemicals that boost our immune system chemicals that speed up our metabolism uh, chemicals that flood our body with literally anti-aging chemicals as well so these all-out bursts of energy can last anywhere between kind of 10 seconds and maybe right up to 90 seconds at some stage from there too and so often you might have heard of this as interval or even fartlek type training and as I said before this can be done uh, cycling it can be done swimming it can be done running it can be done on the rower machine in fact you can even do these high intensity type workouts with weights and things like that as well but the principle is this is the intensity needs to be right up there and so if you're not an exercise and haven't exercised uh, uh, beforehand, then first of all, make sure you get yourself a checkup first. But again, you wanna work to your intensity. So my high intensity might be very different from somebody else who obviously who's an elite level athlete. And again, my high intensity is gonna be different from somebody who hasn't exercised for years as well. So that high intensity, we really need to feel out of breath. It's an uncomfortable feeling as, as well. Now, the great thing about these workouts is they needn't take much time. In fact, one of my favorite workouts to do this I have a spin bike that I have at home and this workout takes you know 20 minutes or less from there too I do a three two three minute warm-up get my body kind of moving from there and then I do bursts of 30 seconds on and then 90 seconds off and I'll do six of those bursts those all-out bursts from there and then I'll have a cool down at the other end for three or four minutes and my workout is done now the nice thing is, as research has shown us about these high intensity workouts, is that they've been shown to give benefits right throughout the day. Particularly, as I said before, in terms of boosting the metabolism. And so you can think of your metabolism as your internal furnace, and it's great for burning body fat. It's terrific for keeping us in, in shape. So we've talked about, first, lots of slow. Second, we need to sprint occasionally. And the third thing we need to do is we need to lift heavy things. And so for some of us, whenever I talk about lifting heavy things, then the first thing, oh, I don't like the gym, I've got to keep away from those places. And the great thing is in terms of lifting heavy things, we don't need to go to a gym. You know, you've got all the equipment that you need kind of on you right there. And so there are some really wonderful functional things, you know, a push-up. Um, that we can do a squat, a lunge, a pull up is great, head down to the park, swing on the monkey bars, those kind of things there as well. So whenever we start to move our body against resistance, then we're lifting heavy things for there as well. Now I love the gym and I like that kind of workout as well and, and once we know how to use our body like that then I find many people like this also. So another thing, when I'm often I'm talking to women about this kind of thing, they get scared about bulking up. 
Now, I've got to tell you this, if it were that easy to bulk up, then every guy that you saw at the gym would be looking like an Adonis. So there are different ways that we can train. If we keep our repetitions a little higher from there, our rest interval shorter in between them, then that minimizes the chance of that. But in terms of bulking up, not only does that require exercise, but it requires eating and a very specific strategy as well. So the great thing about um, you know, both the, the, the sprint efforts that we talked about too, and then also those lifting heavy things, is if we can get a couple of sessions of those together each week, and we can mix the two of them together as well. So our three pillars, uh, lots at a slow pace, sprint occasionally, lift heavy things from there as well. So start to implement these into your daily activities and watch the changes come, not only to your body shape, but your health and well-being. And of course, we know that whenever we exercise is that we feel so much better mentally and emotionally as well. So if you have any questions or comments about this, or if you want to share any of your experiences, then be sure to post this down below here. I really love your comments. I love the feedback as well. So this has been Dr. Angus Pike here, founder and creator of What Actually Works, where we help people to get well and to stay well. We'll see you soon. 